Now I added this problem to the notes because there were so many questions on the homework based on this, right? So I felt like I needed to address it in some way, shape, or form. So we need to then figure out um, the volume of a triangular prism, right? So a triangular prism, in this case, and it could have been any shape here, but I picked this one just because it happened to, you know, I could write a story around it. But my little bunny, uh, I had a bunny in college, by the way, instead of getting a dog because he was easier to move around, even though he was super convinced he was a dog and would go greet people at the door. He was just the sweetest little thing. Anyways, um, imagine that there's water there, but I'm supplying fresh water. I'm pouring fresh water in at a particular rate. Right. So and this is the shape of the trough. So the first thing I need to establish is, first of all, the area or no, not the area, but the volume of um, the trough altogether. Like, how do you find and you always take the area of the base, which happens to be a triangle times the height. Now, this happens to be lying on the side. And the one thing that I can tell you in this particular problem is that the piece that's not changing does not change is the 10. So that's actually something I could put in from the beginning. And that corresponds to the height of my triangular prism in this case. Now in our triangle, so the area of this triangle, if I just looked at that part, what I have is three across this way and four going down. But we ought to be careful because as the water is filling, it's not three and four all of the time. That's the piece that's changing. So the piece that's changing, I have to find a relationship between all of the parts of that. So I'm going to draw the triangle slightly bigger. I know that this is the base and this is the height overall, right? And if I have a small triangle within the bigger triangle, um, I didn't do it. I, let's put it this way. This is four and this is three, the base all the way across. But then if I put in a smaller triangle in here, that's the part where we get the water from, right? So here's the water is filling in here. That part is, wait, I have the base B and the H is in there. And I can set up a proportion just like we did with the cones. The three will correspond to the base and the four will correspond to the height. So I can write a relationship between the base and the height. I get three H is equal to four B like that. So if the water is being pumped into the trough at two inch, cubic inches per minute, how fast is the height of the water changing? So essentially I want to know what the H dt is. And I have sort of a relationship between all of these things. My volume is one half base times height, little base times height. That's just the triangle here. Times, ooh, I should not use H. What should I use for this uh, L maybe? So I should have done the length here. So for our case, we're going to call that piece length so we're not using H in two places, right? Like that. So that would be the length of the trough right there. But it's the area of the base times the length or the height of the, of the rectangular prism or triangular prism in this case, sorry. So in this case, that part is constant. That part doesn't change. So I'm going to put that in right from the beginning. So volume is then going to be, that's going to be 10. So 1 half base times height. That's the small base and small height of the side of the triangle there. Times 10. So the volume is 10 base times height. But I have a relationship between the base and the height, which is 3H is equal to 4B. That's based on what... Uh, the two similar triangles that I had. So if a triangle is being, or if water is being pumped in at a particular case, I want to find the HDT. And the reason why I wrote that over here on the side is because 
if I could possibly rewrite this volume formula all in terms of H then, it would make my life a lot easier. And that's where this comes in over here the, on the right side because I could rewrite the base as uh, 3H over 4, which then I can substitute in so I get the volume is equal to 10 times 3H over 4 times H, which gives me, oh, that's going to be 15 halves H squared. Now it's a much easier formula to deal with. We're going to take the derivative with respect to time in this case. So we get, I'm showing that I'm taking the derivative with respect to time on both sides over 2. Oops, h squared, I forgot. So that's going to give me dv dt is equal to uh, 2 times, so that's 15h dh dt. And I'm interested in when, so when something happens, what does it say here? How fast is the height of the water changing when the height of the water, when h is equal to 2 inches? Okay. Now, if I look at the formula, I know what dv dt is. dv dt was given. dv dt was 2. So I'm going to substitute in a 2, the 15 times the h, which was also 2, dh dt. So then dh dt is equal to 1 over 15. It's positive, which makes sense, because water is being pumped in at that particular time. So this was inches per minute. So gently putting water in. Therefore, um, the height of the water, or you could say the water level, is rising. I think I spelled that word <laughs> wrong earlier with an A. I don't know why. Okay, is rising at a rate of 1 over 15 inches per minute when, don't forget the when, h is equal to 2 inches. Because it changes, it, you know, as the, the water fills further and further up, it'll slow down because it has to fill out more surface area as it's going up. All right. How fast is the surface area? Oh, look at me. How fast is the surface area of the water um, changing? Or oh, it's how is it of the water when the height is too... How fast is the surface area of the water changing? I forgot the word changing. Let's put that in. Changing. When the height of the water is two inches. Okay, so let's look. The surface area now, it's going to be, um, if I go up here, the surface area is literally going to be like, what color should I pick? Purple. Is this rectangle right here? Just that piece there, right? So that means that across here, we define that as lowercase b, and all the length of that side there is 10. So the area that we're talking about is going to be b times this, the, it's, it's a rectangle, right? So the rectangle, the surface area is actually changing, but the piece that's changing is just the length or the width across there down here. So this width here, let me, in green, that piece there up there that I just went past the edges on, but so you could see what I meant up on the picture on the trough, right? So that means, but the 10 doesn't change. So the area is equal to 10b. Okay. Let's see here. I know that it's going to be da. Oh, I got to say I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, right? So d dt of a is equal to d dt of 10b. So da dt is equal to 
10 dB dt. Oh, look, they're directly proportional, PS, to each other. Um, I need to find, though, I, dA dt is what I want. What's dB dt? Hmm. When h is equal to 2, I know that the relationship between these two things is going to be 3h is equal, is equal to 4b. So I've had two options, which was kind of silly. I could have rewritten it in terms of h from the beginning, which probably would have been smarter. I would just have d done the area of 10 times, and then um, base is 4h over, no, 3h over 4, which then becomes the area is equal to uh, 15h over 2, like that, and then rewritten it down here. So it would be dA dt is equal to uh, 15 over 2 times dH dt. And when h is 2, we just found the value up there. It would be dA dt is equal to 15 over 2 dH dt, which we just found was 1 over 15, which is then equal to 1 half. So that means that the area is going to change by uh, a half square inch per minute at that time. But let's say you didn't think of that. So, oh, you know what? I also know that when H is, so I, my first go at it, I thought, oh, I'll just leave it with B. No problem. Up here, I know that I can take the derivative with respect to time of each of these now. D, D, T. It's just a stylistic thing. So we get uh, 3 D, H, D, T is equal to 4 D, B, D, T. And I know what the H, D, T was at that time. So it was 3 over 1, 15. 3 times 1 over 15 is equal to 4 d b d t. So d b d t would then at that time equal, uh, let's see, 1 over 20. And then I could take that 1 over 20 and substitute in for d b d t. So they, look, what 10 times 1 times 1 over 20 is 1 half. We get the same answer either way. So it's just whichever way you think of at that time. I just rethought it as we got to the end. I was like, oh, there is an easier way. Probably your best bet because they're giving it to you in height or when the height is this. Rewrite the base in terms of height because we have a formula for that. Either way, you get, therefore, the surface area, area of the water is changing at a rate of one half uh, square inch per minute. Don't forget it's square inches because it's area now. When the height of water is two inches. There you go. I think this video, I'm going to cut it off here because or else it's going to get too long.